Tommy with Elevation Every Weekend here. Welcome back to the channel. About this time last year, I did a top 10 fat bikes of 2021 list. And a few weeks after that, I followed it up with a top five fat bikes under $1,500. Both of those videos are still fairly relevant and linked down in the description below. So definitely check them out. But since it's been over a year, I do feel like it is time to do an updated list for 2022. But due to the sporadic and limited releases of fat bikes over the last year, I am gonna change up this list a little bit. Instead of focusing on specific bikes as I did on the prior two lists. This year I'm going to broaden the scope a little bit and focus on brands and models in the complete range. This one list will better consolidate a wider range of bikes at all price points and it's going to still be focused more on the mainstream market. So while there are some amazing boutique bike brands out there, most of those bikes are much more expensive and much more limited on availability. But stay tuned to the very end because I am going to have a couple honorable mentions after I've completed the list. So let's get on to my top 10 list of fat bikes for 2022 in no particular order. So let's kick off the list with one of my preferred brands and one of the trail breakers in the category, and that's Surly. As a point of reference, I do own two 2014 Surly Pugsleys and the 2020 Surly Ice Cream Truck. I also have extensive experience with my brother's 2021 Surly Wednesday. For 2022, Surly is actually doing things a little bit differently. They do have new colors on the website right now for the Wednesday and the Ice Cream Truck. However, currently they are both frame only options, which to me is reminiscent of how the Pugsley started in the first place. I actually did reach out to Surly directly though and they did respond back and tell me that they will have complete bikes for the Wednesday in the ice cream truck available in March or early April. So complete bike options are coming and if you're interested I would get with your local bike shop right now and try to get on the list because they're probably going to go fast. So like all Surly bikes they are fully steel frame construction featuring their 4130 chromoly frame options which are proven to be durable yet capable and cost effective. Let's start with the Wednesday. It is proven to be one of the best all-round values in fat biking currently priced at $16.75. It's also one of the most versatile fat bikes on the market and it's not really that heavy at about 32 pounds despite its all steel frame construction. It runs 26 by 4 inch tires which is a good all-around wheel and tire size combination for fat biking. It can accommodate up to a 4.3 inch in the rear but you may have a little bit of chain rub in the biggest cogs. It has 150 millimeter wide spacing up front and somewhat in common 177 millimeter wide spacing in the rear which is why the rear tire size is a bit limited. Currently the drivetrain is a mix of SRAM NX and SX 1x11 though it remains to be seen if that will change later when they go to the full bike option. Next up is the Surly Ice Cream Truck which is the big brother in the lineup coming at a moderate price point of $2,099. It also has 150 millimeter spacing in the front but does have the current standard of 197 millimeter spacing in the rear. It comes stock with 26 by 4.8 inch tires so about the biggest tire volume on the market. The geometry of the ice cream truck is a little bit more aggressive so it makes it a little bit more of a trail capable bike and it comes with a really nice solid mid-range all-around spec including a Shimano SLX 1x12 drivetrain again which may be updated later this year. My 2020 version is well proven if you've watched this channel at all in the Rocky Mountains here in both snow and high altitude rocky conditions and set up tubeless with the addition of a dropper seat post my bike comes in right around 35 pounds for a large. Both these bikes have pretty much all the frame and fork mounts you could ask for on a fat bike so not only are they trail capable but they're great for adventure riding and they both come with threaded bottom brackets which I'm always a fan of. Next up on the list is the Trek Farley. Of all the bikes I do not own on this list the Trek Farley is the one I would like to own most. There are three models an entry-level rigid aluminum frame Farley 5 for $2,000 the Farley 7 upgraded aluminum version with a front suspension fork for $28.49 and the high-end carbon frame to $9.6 for $3,500. They actually do still list the Farley EX as a frame only option for $36.29 which is an all carbon full suspension frame. Key features for all Farley bikes are 150 millimeter front and 197 millimeter rear spacing with three axles, 27.5 wheel size that runs 4.5 inch tires that are tubeless ready and dropper seat post stock on all models. And they can run up to a 100 millimeter front suspension as well as demonstrated by the Farley 7. The Farley 5 features a solid build spec with a Dior 1x10 drivetrain and the bike weighs about 32 pounds. I do think it would be nice if this bike had an 11 or 12 speed cassette in the rear. The Farley 7 does have an upgraded spec including a mix of SRAM NX GX 1x12 speed components, but it's mostly distinguished by the inclusion of a Mastodon front suspension fork 
which also adds to the weight at about 35 pounds. And then last on the list is the Farley 9.6 full carbon frame with a more premium spec to match, including full SRAM GX Eagle drivetrain and brakes. And as a result, it's the latest in the lineup at under 29 pounds. I find these bikes to be highly capable and great looking with the benefit of 27.5 wheels and dropper seat posts and a reasonable range in the price spectrum. About the only two things on the negative I will mention is they utilize press fit bottom brackets and they don't have as many frame mounts for racks and bike packing as some of the other options on the list. Next up on the list is the Rocky Mountain Blizzard and they actually have what might be the best full range of fat bikes on this list at four distinct price points. The Blizzard is actually the first fat bike I ever rode and was the bike that kind of kicked off my interest in fat bikes and led me to buy my first fat bike used, which was the Surly Pugsley many years back. They offer two aluminum bikes with 26 inch wheels and two carbon bikes with 27.5 wheels. The spacing for all the bikes in the lineup is 150 millimeter front and 197 millimeter rear. And the head tube angle is one of the most progressive for a fat bike at 66 degrees. Almost all the other bikes on this list are in the 68 to 70 degree range. So as a result of this more progressive geo, it's one of the most trail worthy options on the list. The Blizzard Alloy 10 comes in at a great price of $15.99 and features a 1x10 Dior drivetrain, SRAM brakes, and 26 by 4.6 inch tires. The Blizzard 20 is similar in concept as the 10 with just some improvements in the drivetrain, such as a 1x12 Dior drivetrain and other spec improvements to justify the $18.49 price. And the next up we jump to the Carbon 30, which is an all carbon frame. It has a similar part spec as the 20 but the upgraded carbon frame and a change to 27.5 wheels with 4.5 inch tires pushes the price point up to $26.99 and then last is the carbon 50 which has the highest spec parts overall featuring a Shimano XT SLX mix, 1x12 drivetrain, DT Swiss rear hub, and the same 27.5 wheel and tire combo as the 30, but these improvements push the price to a still respectable $32.99. These bikes also have about the most mounts of any bike on the frames and do appear to have threaded bottom brackets on the carbon bikes. Next up, Kona has two very solid options on the list, both of which are aluminum frame bikes, feature 150 and 197 front and rear spacing, and tubeless ready 26 inch wheels with 4.8 inch tires. Coming in right at $2,000, the Woe is a great no-nonsense fat bike that does a little bit of everything well. The spec is largely Kona's own parts spec and it has a Shimano 1x11 Dior drivetrain. Coming in at the $2,500 price point is the Kona Woo, which is still an aluminum frame but has a carbon front fork as an upgrade. The bike also features a slightly higher parts spec as it has a newer 1x12 Dior drivetrain and better brakes than the Woe. Both these bikes have a decent selection of mounts. The lower Price Woe has them on the rear triangle but not the fork, and the Woo has them on the fork but not the rear triangle. Another company that's a bit off the mainstream radar but has a great selection of fat bikes is Norco with their Bigfoot line. They have four varieties available, all with aluminum frames. All the bikes feature modern spacing with 150 and 197 millimeter front to back, and all the bikes, even the low end versions, come with 27.5 inch wheels, which is my preferred size on a fat bike. The Bigfoot 3 comes in at $15.99, and at this price, you get an an all aluminum frame and fork, an entry level spec featuring Shimano Dior 1x11 drivetrain and mechanical disc brakes, and you do get two color options. Next up at $19.99 is the Bigfoot 2, which is similar to the prior bike but has a number of part upgrades, such as a full Dior 1x12 drivetrain and better brakes, a dropper seat post, and also two color choices. Next in the lineup is the Bigfoot 1 coming in at $25.99. Upgrades include a carbon fork. The drivetrain components are a mix of Shimano XT and SLX 1 by 12 and SRAM level hydraulic brakes and a dropper seat post. And then last up at $31.99 is the Bigfoot S1. It takes the trail worthiness to a higher level as it trades the lightweight carbon front fork for a 100 millimeter Mastodon front suspension fork with all other spec remaining the same. All models have a threaded bottom bracket. The lower two variants have a good amount of mounts, but the higher two spec bikes lack them on the front forks. As a long time title sponsor for the Fat Bike World Nationals, Borealis is probably the most custom customizable fat bike on the market. Instead of selecting from a few static build options like virtually every other bike on this list, with Borealis you get to use what I consider the coolest bike website on the market and tailor your build of your bike to specific details down to the tubes and the tires. And in my opinion, it's a refreshing and really cool option to have to really dial your bike in exactly how you would want it, especially if you have a preference on the spec of the bike. They offer two models, the aluminum frame Flume and the full carbon frame Crestone. And you do have the option to 
expect either of these bikes in a wide range. These bikes really are performance based and are promoted for year round use. Doing the cheapest build on the Flume I could do, it came out to a very reasonable $2,370, especially when you consider that includes a carbon fork and seat post, and I did spec it with 27.5 wheels. One of the coolest things about the website is as you add each component, it not only calculates the price, but the weight of the bike too. This bike still came in under 30 pounds, so if you have a weight target, you could play around with the specs you choose to achieve that target. As for the Crestone, again, it is their high-end carbon option. I did the cheapest build you could do with 27.5 wheels, and it came in around 34.20 at just over 27 pounds. And just for fun, I did build a pretty much all-out high-end version, and it came in over $6,500 and just under 25 pounds. So other than a couple water bottle mounts, there's not really any other mounts on these bikes. But both these bikes are fantastic options for performance, and if you have a very specific mix of parts and wheel sizes you want to accomplish. Many of you may question this next addition on the list, as there definitely are other bikes not on this list that are objectively much better bikes. But I did feel it was important to provide a true budget entry level option under $1,000, and Mongoose has a range of bikes that does fit that bill. So while there are a few of their bikes I would absolutely avoid, such as the Steel Argus ST26, the Malice and the Dolomite, which I actually currently own. Some of their other bikes are much better options at low end price points. Mongoose does have a number of options in their Argus range of fat bikes, including one of the few with a 24 inch wheel size option for children. I'm only gonna cover the two aluminum framed options that I feel like I could remotely recommend. Both of these bikes do have outdated quick release axles as pretty much the entire industry has gone to through axles. And these bikes also have very uncommon and outdated 135 millimeter front and 190 millimeter rear spacing so they're not going to be very compatible with future upgrades. The Argus Trail 26 comes in at $819 and features an aluminum frame and fork. It does have very low end parts but at least there's a 2x8 drivetrain and some other parts that are aluminum as well such as the stem and handlebars. Of note it does have mechanical disc brakes still and extremely heavy low end 26 by 4 inch wire bead tires which would be the very first upgrade I would make to this bike to make it a much better performer. The Argus Sport 26 comes in at $1,099. It is also aluminum frame and fork, but has some decent upgrades to make it a much better bike than the trail. It has a more recent 1x10 Shimano drivetrain with some Dior parts mixed in. It has solid Tektro hydraulic brakes and 26 by 4.8 folding bead tires, though they are an off-brand. So neither of these bikes are at the cutting edge of performance or really designed for long-term upgrades, but I wanted to mention a couple serviceable true budget options to this list. So shifting gears back to the bigger brands, Giant offers two models in their Yukon fat bike lineup. Both bikes are aluminum frame with a composite front fork and feature modern 150 and 197 millimeter spacing front and rear. They both also feature 27.5 wheels, which can accommodate up to a 4.5 inch wide tire, despite the reasonably narrow Q factor. So both these bikes offer good all around value at their price points. Coming in at 1830, the Yukon 2 is one of the better value bikes on the market. It is a solid parts spec of Giant Parts, a 1x12 Dior drivetrain, and ceramic level hydraulic brakes. It does come with good tires, but is a press fit bottom bracket. Coming in at $2,050, the Yukon 1 follows a similar formula, but with a better part spec, including a SRAM NX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain and slightly better brakes. Both bikes are mid-pack with mounts for bike packing purposes, but again, are just good all around fat bike options. Next up on the list is Framed. They offer probably the most diverse range of fat bikes on the market. That range goes from one of the few with a 24 inch wheel option on the small side to offering a carbon frame full suspension fat bike. They actually have some women specific bikes as well. On the entry level side, the 26 inch wheel Minnesota comes in at 1049. The frame and fork are aluminum and it comes with an entry level but name brand spec including Shimano Dior 1x10 drivetrain, Avid mechanical disc brakes, and 26x4 folding bead tires. This is probably the best bike on the list for $1,000. There's also a Minnesota LTD at 1349. Again, still all aluminum construction but has a few nice upgrades including Shimano SLX 1x12 drivetrain, 27.5 wheels with high quality 4 inch tires, and SRAM level hydraulic disc brakes. This is probably the best bike on the list under $1,500. Next up in their lineup is the Alaskan. It's currently showing at reduced price of $2,199 from $3,500. It's a full carbon fat bike with 27.5 wheels and a fantastic value if you can actually get it at those lower price points. It has a really solid build spec and lists options to go from SRAM NX2 
to GX. You can also spec it with a Blue Doe front suspension fork, and it comes with a great mix of SRAM, race face parts, and again, spec choices will impact price and quality, but it's a really strong carbon contender outside of the mainstream brands, again, especially if you can get it at those lower prices. And at the top of their range is the only full suspension complete bike option on the list, the Montana Carbon at $3,300. It's definitely not designed for max tire volume as it comes with a 177 millimeter wide rear spacing and runs 27.5 by 3.8 inch tires. It's a full carbon frame with a RockShox Blue Doe fork and a RockShox Marnik rear shock. It has a solid build of SRAM components, including NX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain. And this bike lists a ship date of April 2022, so it sounds like it is actually available right now. So if you're interested, you might want to inquire. But again, probably probably the best top to bottom wide range of fat bike options on the list. And last but not least are Salsa Cycles, which features probably my favorite fat bike on the entire list, the Salsa Bear Grease, which I do currently own the 2021 version in customized form. Salsa is one of the longtime leaders in adventure and fat biking, and their fat bike lineup features two distinct models, the Muckluck and of course the Bear Grease. Although both bikes feature the same 150 and 197 millimeter wide spacing, threaded bottom brackets, and pretty much all the mounts you could want on a fat bike, they are designed for distinctly different applications. The Muckluck is a beefier 26 inch wheel bike which has aluminum and carbon options. The Muckluck is designed for adventure riding and max tire volume. The aluminum version starts at $2,099, featuring 26 by 4.6 inch tires, a micro shift, one by 10 drivetrain, Tektro hydraulic brakes, and one of the most versatile frames on the market, factoring in mounts, wheel size options, and the ability to use a front derailleur or suspension fork. The carbon version comes in at $41.99, and while very similar to the aluminum version in design and purpose, in addition to the carbon frame, it has a number of upgrades, including a Shimano SLX 1x12 drivetrain and SRAM G2 brakes and rotors. So definitely a great bike for more extreme conditions and terrain, especially if you want to load it up with gear. As for the Bear Grease, it is promoted as a groomed racing fat bike, featuring a sleeker and lighter frame design in carbon only and coming with 27.5 wheels and smaller 4-inch tires. The lowest cost Dior version is now up to $28.99. And just for reference, I paid $23.99 for my 2021 model. And it still comes equipped with the same Shimano Dior 1x11 with Tektro hydraulic brakes and a mix of decent parts. Priced at $35.99 is the mid-tier SLX version, which has a slightly upgraded Kingpin all-carbon front fork, a 1x12 Shimano SLX drivetrain, SRAM, Guide T brakes, and some other parts upgrades. And last in the lineup is the ultra-high-end X01 Eagle bike, priced at $7,099 has a combination of SRAM X01 and GX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain components, G2 RSC brakes, and a big wheel upgrade with Whiskey Carbon Rims and DT Swiss Hubs. At 26 pounds, it comes in about four pounds less than the Dior version. Okay, so that is this year's main list of fat bike recommendations. But before we end the video, I did wanna give you a couple honorable mentions to consider. First, I wanna highlight looking at the used market. Currently, used bikes can be overpriced and can be snapped up extremely quickly if you do find a good deal, but I do always encourage you to spend some time looking here as you may well find a fair deal and get a bike that's actually better than you could afford on the new market in your area that can meet or exceed your needs. And as for new bikes, another honorable mention is the Canyon Dude. It's another really good all carbon frame modern fat bike at moderate price points. I actually really like and have found good value in their bikes and their direct to consumer model having bought a bike from them last year. And then last on the budget side of things, I would recommend taking a quick look at the bike's direct options. This is another website direct to consumer option out there. They typically do offer bikes at the very low budget end, but sometimes they do have some mid price options that are worth considering and can be a good value overall. So that is it for the 2022 list. If you found this video useful, please drop a like down below. And again, if you haven't seen them already in companion with this video, I do recommend checking out the 2021 videos I've listed in the description down below as they can really round out all the options on the market. And if you do feel I missed a bike that really should be on this 2022 list, please drop it down in the comments down below and explain why you think it should have made the list. I have a lot more fat and adventure bike content coming soon. So if you want to follow along and not miss it, definitely subscribe. It does really help out the channel. So thanks a lot and have a great day.